and that's what we call emission-free travel, Doctor Strange style. Guys, welcome back to RBR. Today, I'm collecting my brand new 911 992 GTS here from the Reading HQ. But first, as you can see around me, we're surrounded by some awesome press cars because Reading is the HQ for Porsche in the UK as well. So as is tradition with all my Porsche collections here, let's first check out some of these awesome cars out here. Some will be familiar to you from the channel, some you'll see coming up on the channel soon. Then we'll head inside my car surrounded by some absolute legends. We'll do an unveil. I'll tell you all about the specification. And I'm also gonna tell you a little bit about how all Porsche centers are gonna be upgraded to an amazing new racing themed motorsport look. So guys, let's have a look around these cars first and then go inside and check out mine. So to start off proceedings, OPR 911, that plate used to be on the GT3 RS press car that we drove on RBR. And it's fittingly now returned on probably my favorite of the GT cars, which is the GT3 Touring. Absolutely loved driving that at Goodwood last year. You guys love the video as well. And it looks amazing in, uh, what was it, Dolomite Silver? I think it is. Very monochromatic spec on uh, this OPR 911, but I'm digging it. I'm working with it, I think it's cool. Silver wheels, such a win. This one is a manual as well, and I like that they've kept the red light bar actually. Probably something that I should have done on my car because in person, that is looking rather good. Then this, look at that, Frozen Berry GT4. Press know how to spec something to make it look exceedingly sexy, don't they? I mean, that is just a special vehicle. GT4 is the GT product, which is probably longest in the tooth now, but put a fresh coat of paint on it and boom, looking incredible. Now, one car that absolutely inspired my decision of buying the car today was FWD. The last time that we had GTS on the channel, this is the one that then sealed the deal that I just had to get GTS because it, it could be that good in all wheel drive. How good is it gonna be in just a rear wheel drive variant? And to be fair, the specification made me think maybe I should have gone a little bit wilder on mine, which actually I took some inspiration from this and you'll see that in a minute. And sitting right next to that, look at that, a Taycan to match our lovely GT4. Again, looking so nice and frozen berry, absolutely love it. There's another car that you recognize from the channel, Turbo GT, a very difficult car to get a hold of, but absolutely the king of SUVs. Now let's head in that way, check out what's going on with the dealership and see my car. So guys, the Porsche retail experience has been completely redone. They're getting a new look on the outside, which is gonna be pretty spectacular and actually inspired by the cars. So you see this new curvature, which we haven't had on Porsche centers before. These have actual lights within the grooves here. So at night when it lights up, it looks like the rear of a 911. How cool is that? But inside it gets even better rather than having the fairly, you know, the inside of the previous Porsche centers we're quite used to now, fairly clean, but nothing too exciting going on now they're gonna have an all motorsport themed interior with lights and a real attention to detail as to what makes Porsche Porsche in terms of racing. You can see some of the renders here. Reading is one of the first in the world to get it done. As I said, HQ in the UK, and it's gonna look absolutely spectacular. Can't wait to show you that soon. So for now, Reading has a temporary showroom. Oh, hello, look at that. It's not bad, is it? Hmm. Anyway, I'm very easily distracted. My car is hiding through here. I have to show you this. It's just through these doors, like I said, surrounded by a load of legends in the back there, covered up. Let's go and see it in a second. First, let's head inside. Right, guys, here we go. Temporary showroom in Reading. There's the next one. Taycan GTS Sport Turismo. Like I said in the last video, what a peach of a car. This is completely blacked out. What a stealth, gorgeous spec here. Here is Temptation Station. All the latest Porsche clothing, equipment, things that you probably don't need, but you absolutely want, like magnet sets of Porsche badges. Why not? Stick them all over your fridge. Some nice salt and pepper mills there. You saw me buy the uh, 911 ice cube tray because why not? They've got more ice cube trays here. Look at that. That's cool. How, do you, how can you come here and not actually buy something? Want. Here you can see some weapons for the uh, Asian mothers out there, throw out their son's heads, the famous chapel. You thirsty boys know what I'm talking about. As my cameraman Jamie says, this one's for me because I'm a total mug. Total mug, hello. There's the only guy who's allowed to buy a GT3 here. You are right, Dave? 
And here we go, here's GTS Corner now, that's a nice one, huh? Cabriolet, which for daily use, I actually prefer to target because the rear seat's not as compromised. Not in the most exciting spec, but even then, GTS looks pretty damn amazing. And look at this, Porsche design timepieces. This is actually the first time that I've seen one of the Porsche design watches in person. That is really, really nice. Would you pay 5.6K for a matching watch though? I suspect a lot of people would because if it matches your spec and there's literally thousands of combinations to do like you do with your cars, it could be really special. You can tell it's the HQ and they've got some amazing stock here. Check out this Speedster. Oh my God. Porsche porn right there. And if you thought that was good, just look at the interior. Oh my God. I just had an accident. Fantastic. And then GT3 itself. This is in a PTS color, which I don't know what it's called. I hope. Riviera. Well done, Cameron. There he is. He wanted a cameo. He's got it. Riviera blue. I do wonder though, what do you guys think of the stripe on it? And that's a leading question leading onto my car. Anyway, let's head over. We've had enough foreplay. Let's get to the main event. Check out my GTS, which is hiding right back there with some good company. So guys, how's that for a welcome? I requested specifically Porsche's marketing car because I knew you'd love to see Ruby Star again. She was here last time when I picked up the Taycan Cross Turismo as well. And it's always a pleasure just to see her. I've got this idea in my head. I want to do a GT3 video about living with the GT3 daily and I want it to be this car. If you guys want to see that happen, let me know in the comments below. I just want to get that thumbnail on my channel because it just looks so nice. Again, Porsche UK Press just absolutely nailing the, the specification of this thing. Again, silver wheels. We love them for it. Well done. And then I don't even mind that. That looks good. Man, oh, weak in the knees. The knees are weak. It's weird, isn't it? When you look at the reflection of my car, it looks like it's a GT3. That's just a mean tease. You can't do that. So as I said, we're surrounded by some legends. We've got a G model turbo here. This is quite nice, 911S, original Targa. That is what started it all, so we all love the Targa so much. Gorgeous, some nice heritage badges on the back there as well. What a rare car. That's the demonstrator, talk about that later. Super 90, where would you ever see that? Oh my God. Oh, the heritage of the thing. Look at it, it's immaculate. What a thing. Just another G model Carrera which looks, what an era of cars these were. And another 911S in the corner there in something similar to Mamba Green. What a lineup we have for this unveil. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I've teased you too much. I love a little bit of a tease, but there she is. Enough teasing, let's get this cover off. Can't wait to see what you guys think of it. And I can't wait to see it myself because I changed a few things and I wanna see what the final result is like. There you go, guys. What do you think? GT Silver Metallic. I've gone with the gloss black details on both the wheels and the trims on the outside to give it a bit more contrast to what is otherwise black plastic, like I'll show you on the other car that we have here. Then I added a few extra things, like the middle stripe that I actually saw on a touring somewhere that I thought was fantastic. Then the black side arch protection foils as well. I'm gonna run you through the whole spec now, but that first look, to me, I love the idea of a stealthier GTS, but then I wanted to shout a little bit that it's Porsche Motorsport as well. So I think this is a nice combination of the two without going for a zany color. All right, guys, here we go. GT Silver Metallic, as I said, really classic Porsche color, but one that I love. I think it's really classy. It shows off the lines of a curvy car like the 992 so well, and then it links back to more fun historic stuff like we have here really well, particularly look at the white G model turbo that we have here, the way you have those bonnet lines in the middle. On the silver car here, you can see that so much better than in most other colors. So that's your GT Silver Metallic, which I think works really well. Then as for the stripe, it's in a satin graphite gray. I first saw this on a touring, as I said, I loved it. I loved the pinstripe that you don't get on the standard stripes. It doesn't continue on the sunroof, but it comes down here 
on the rear wing. And unlike even the official one, it finishes properly like behind the badges. So he's done a lovely job there. I think it really works. Then I mentioned to you guys, I got the exterior package painted in high gloss black. This is about a 2K option. But what it does essentially is gives you, first of all, the gloss black wheels, which I'm not super fussed about. I could have silver, I could have matte black, that's fine. It's interesting, it's a nice contrast. But what it gives you here is the gloss black trims on both your air intakes, your lower lip, and things like your wing mirrors. And then back here on your rear diffuser, for example, on the normal car, it's all matte black plastic. Here, on this section here, it's gloss black, and it breaks it up a little bit with some nice contrast. So I think that's well worth it if you wanna add contrast. Otherwise, it looks like the demonstrator over there, which I'll show you now. Here's Redding's Carmine Red demo car in proper GTS Carmine Red, as is historically appropriate. Now you can see what I said here about the rear diffuser. Look, it's all matte black plastic. The wheels are matte black as well. Wing mirrors, body colored. And then again, you come around the front and again, you've got matte black trims all over here, which is then similar to sport design package on any other 992. That other option, I think, gives it a bit more uniqueness. Further on in the front, as is my specking habit, I've got the best headlights you can, which are the LED matrix headlights, which are here finished in black. Again, nice contrast to the GT Silver, helping them pop out a little bit more than they normally would. They are a 1300 pound option, but again, I think it's well worth it. Don't wanna be skimping out on good lights. Then we come to the side. Of course, you've got the gloss black 20 and 21 inch wheels. Exterior package in gloss black also gives you the lower trim in gloss black. GTS, of course, on the side, you need to have that. Then I added the rear arch protection foils because like in the FWD yellow car, I thought it just added a nice bit of flair. It's a nice throwback to some previous 911 history, like our G model turbo here with that as well. I just love that link to Porsche heritage. I've got the rear quarter even better. I love how the stripe finishes off on the wing, which looks really cool. The gloss black again, working so well matching nicely with the gloss GT Silver. I love that lower diffuser. Speaking of the lower area, these are the sport pipes. So they're slightly different to the normal ones. You can see they've got this metallic finish on the inside and then on the outside, like a matte black pipe, which I think looks a little bit more aggressive. Again, sets it apart from your standard pipes and it's well worth doing that, not an expensive option. On the rear went for the exclusive rear lights, which basically means they don't have the red color within them. Again, I think it could have looked good in red as well, but I think it works. I think it works really well. What would you guys have done? Of course, I've got the tilt inside sunroof on the top as well, which is why the stripe didn't continue. Again, ideas of keeping it more light and airy inside, because I'm gonna have my kids in the rear as well. So you want it, you know, as daily practical as possible, so they don't moan about too much stuff when you say you wanna go out in the 911. One really cool coincidence, this is not a private plate, but it almost looks like it's my surname, and I'm sure someone at admin because all the reading plates come with R, they managed to find somebody that almost looked like Rihan R. So how brilliant is that? I don't even know if I want to put the private plate on, but I probably will. Let me show you why, because there's a cool story behind that. So this plate first used to be on my AMG GTS. It was the first ever GTS name car that I owned. Now it finds its way onto a Porsche instead. Is this a sign of things to come? Mr. AMG no more? Who knows, I keep testing these bloody cars and each one is better than the next um, since I started the channel. Do you think I should put this on? I think it'll be a nice link to my first GTS. So guys, that's the exterior. Now let's head inside and I'll show you the options I chose for the inside. Well, that was the world's most boring drive home ever. But I thought we really should bring it home because it's all good looking at things in a nice dealership, but admiring a car in its natural setting outside, particularly here at the RBR driveway. And it's even more important for a, a stealthy spec like this to see what it would look like, you know, in a real world setting. Now, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the options that I got for this car, as well as all the interior options and then show you a few more practical things like car seats, prams, 
how is it going to be living with this 911? More of that I'll cover in the full review as well, but just to give you a little taste right now, I think is important. You know what, for me, at home, it just looks a thousand times better when you can see it. You know, real life reflections, trees, you really see, particularly in silver, like the body come alive. We can appreciate the spec a little bit more together now. I really like the stripe. I like the fact that the, that graphite gray element kind of in certain shades, you almost can't see the stripe and it disappears, which is quite nice. You know, it keeps it nice and stealthy. Then the gloss black elements as well. I think we can appreciate them a little bit more out in the open. You've got, you know, more reflections. So much better than just the black plastic. Even the wheels, which I probably wouldn't have minded in satin black. I think they look really good with the gloss black. Then we've got the black protection arches, which I know not to everyone's taste, but if you understand the heritage, like with that G model turbo that we saw at Reading, then it's just, you know, it hits the mark, I think really well. So there's no narrow body 911 anymore, unlike 991 GTS, 992 is also wide body, which some people don't like, but I love the stance that it gives the car. It just looks so impressive. Right guys, it's the battle that you never knew you needed to see, and maybe the most important part of the video, 911 versus Pram. I found this particular one, which is a Recaro Pram. I Googled the question, where can you find a Pram that fits in the front of a 911? Found the answer that it should be this one. However, bear in mind, it can only fit in the rear wheel drive because of course the all wheel drive version has more hardware in the front. But let's see if it's even true in the first place. This is really important for me, okay? Because with my kids, if I haven't got the Pram and it's not able to fit, then forget about it. This is not gonna be a family vehicle. You ready for this? There we go. And yes, it does actually fit. Does it close though? Hang on, let's check. Let's check. Yes, it closes and it fits. That makes the GTS an actual viable family vehicle for me. I can't believe we did it. I'm so happy about that. I can't remember the name of the Recaro Pram off by hand, but I'll search my emails. I'll put a link in the description below so any rear wheel drive 911 owners in 992 can find it. We've got a car seat in the back, Pram in the front, We've done it guys, this is the life. Sports car for the family and no one, and no space for shopping. So we can spend more on cars. So guys, where I've tested things like the base 911 in the past and I thought you hardly needed any options. I didn't want to do that with GTS because I wanted it to be as sporty as possible. I think GTS deserves it. So what I did was I got some important options that I think you guys should as well. I got first of all the power steering plus, which of course is going to help with the steering feel. I got rear wheel steering as well, as you can see in there, which again is gonna help with cornering in slow corners and then stability at high speeds. And finally, Porsche Dynamic chassis control in there as well, which is gonna be helped with the helper springs that come straight out of GT3 and Turbo. All really important options. One thing I didn't get that's very expensive are the carbon ceramic brakes, because as I've tested for normal road use, the steel's absolutely fine. Now, it's only right that we head inside and we check out the interior and I'll fill you in on the options that I got for the car as well. Let's talk a little bit about the spec first because I didn't want to go for the plain black interiors that I'd seen in say the last press car that we tried. With this, I got the GTS interior package. It's about 2,800, but it gives you some lovely contrast with the red stitching alongside the race techs and the Nappa leather. You can see on the headrest here, you've got GTS nicely stitched within there as well. And all those red details flow around the car. For example, our floor mats as well, which I thought was a lovely touch. Even our red seat belts here, again, working really well with the whole theme. I then continued that idea with Carmine Red in the rev counter and for our sports chrono watch, both of them together looking really fantastic and matching everything else. So we've got a nice theme of black and red, which then the red then connects to the outside with the calipers. I love connecting the inside and the outside of, of my cars when it comes to specification. Then I got the carbon package for the interior, which is something normally I wouldn't get, but again, I thought GTS, it deserves carbon. And it's nice, you get it across your front dash in a large piece here within the door cards, you get it around the cup holder. Again, I wouldn't do it in a normal 911, but I do think that GTS does deserve it. Also got the Bose sound system because hey, you wanna to listen to some tunes in a car like this, right? The other thing that's really important because 992 has increased in size so much versus 991, there's no narrow body now, was getting the full 360 degree park assist because then you're gonna be saving your alloys. You don't wanna be messing that up. So absolutely, you don't get any other option, make sure you get that. Now when it comes to kids, I've put a car seat in the back here. As you can see, it's not the most ideal one. The base is too big. 
but I've been looking at the Porsche owners forums and I've found a couple of suggestions. I will buy one of them by the time I do a full review on this car and then we will decide together whether it works properly. Hopefully if we can get a winner like the Pram, I'm gonna be very happy indeed. Now the other thing I always option is the painted key because why the hell not? I, I did find out though, you have to be very careful because I did drop my Taycan key quite a few times. Luckily Porsche Reading were kind enough to get it resprayed for me. So you have to baby them a little bit, but to have that connection to your car spec on the key, I think it's priceless, right? So absolutely do that. The Asian in me is happy that they've left the screen protector on the touch screen here. I'm never peeling that off. That's a job for the next owner. No, no, I'm kidding. I, I will take that off, that looks hideous. And then of course, the final part of car collection tradition is showing you guys the sad little things that I put in my cars whenever I collect them. For example, microfibers, so important when you've got touch screens and glossy parts in your vehicle, that always goes in. I always keep a suede shoe brush for steering wheels, which are either Alcantara, Race Tex, or Dynamica, etc. This is good as well, just a simple spray bottle. Again, just to keep your interiors nice and clean, particularly if you, if you have kids. And uh, finally, some tissues. I'm still waiting on the Asian gold tissue box holder that so many of you have promised. I'm missing out, this is not right. Don't promise things you can't give me. So guys, that's my 992 GTS. It's come after reviewing so many of the, either the base 911s, owning the turbo for a little while as well, trying to figure out which one is the one that works for my life, works with the kids, etc., etc. I'm hoping GTS is the one. Full report to come in the future. Um, massive thanks also to Matt at Lux Asset Finance, who was able to finance both this and the G-Wagon and refinance my Black Series so that I could actually afford these things and not have the kids living on peanuts. Thank you, Matt. Get in touch with him to sort uh, your car finance out as well. And of course, a huge thanks to Porsche Press team and Porsche Reading for making the showroom nice and pretty for us to film some legends in as well. So guys, if you've enjoyed this episode, please do like, and most of all, subscribe to RBR. And I'll see you guys next time in the GTS.